Welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Hey folks, John Duffin here with Duffin Media. Welcome back to another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is the home, the place, the platform to help you find your best, most true, authentic business voice. Hell, your best voice. Get what you want, find what you need, improve your results, make billions of dollars. We guarantee, all right, we don't guarantee that, but the rest of it, we do all that, right? And guess what? I get to bring back my friend, recurring, I'm almost ready to call him a co-host, my recurring partner, best overall speaker, coach, monster podcast host, uh, Jay Duran, Culture Matters. Welcome back, buddy. Thanks for having me. Jay, I'll get right to it at this point, which is I'm noticing, and you've helped me notice, the fact that I'm seeing more of you, it, it, it seems. I love the fact that we hear you all the time. You've got hundreds of episodes published and or, and or in the can in regards to your podcast. So it's not exactly as if you've been hiding. <laughs> You're quite easy to find. And folks, find the Culture Matters podcast, especially the, my God, nine, 10 episodes that I've been grateful enough that I've been on. Find them anywhere you get your podcast. But I'm noticing more of an upfront video sort of presence, whether it's podcast guests, as you're kind enough to come back with me again today. Mm. It's number five, I believe, if I'm counting correctly. Incredible. What's it like for you to be on the other side of the microphone? Well, I think maybe instead of bitching and moaning and complaining about how... <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice to see everyone again yeah. hey all right as i said we were right and friendly go man <laughs> they uh you know i had this quote right here where to go oh okay here's okay. one yeah yeah instead of no this isn't the quote i'll just finish my sentence there mm-hmm. let's start with instead of bitching and moaning and complaining mm-hmm. how poorly i think everyone else is doing why don't i just throw my my hat in the ring <laughs> so here's a, qu- a quote that quote's perfect, by the way. No, yeah, here's another quote. He who would learn to fly one day must first learn to stand mm-hmm. and walk and run and climb and dance. Mm-hmm. One cannot fly into flying. Friedrich Nietzsche. Mm. So there was a time where I spoke as much as I could. Mm-hmm. And every day a video went out on YouTube and Facebook whether anyone was uh, ready to watch or watching or, or cared or not, it was something that I was doing for myself and with the intention to mm-hmm. for opportunities to be drummed up. Mm-hmm. That was years ago. And that led to opportunities. It led to the opportunities to serve, meaning client acquisition. Right. Now, client acquisition is one thing. It could easily be relegated to sales. Mm-hmm. Someone either uh, doesn't know then they find out, let's say they market it to, now they find out about a product or service. Mm-hmm. And now there's going to be some type of process of inquiry and honesty and so on around the product and or service for them to purchase, right? For the relationship to start. So sales, I marketed myself, the idea that culture mattered, which led to sales. Well, there's this other thing that I noticed could easily be under overlooked with sales. And that would be service. Mm. So (laughs) the last handful of years has been focused on service, working deeply and uh, with our client partners and for their actual companies to grow. What that doesn't mean you never leave the cave again and tell people, Mm -hmm. you know, the, or, or, uh, you know, what is the Noah's Ark, you know? The, the it's raining the wind get the animals so the animals. now they're going into a season where i think it's important like I said, i'll go back to the beginning of the conversation yeah yeah instead of complaining and mm-hmm. uh, moaning and be mm-hmm. me feeling uh, uh contempt mm-hmm. for my competition why not throw mm-hmm. my hat in the ring and talk again 
market. Hey, so Jay wrote a book, 30 Days of Thought. And I personally happen to have a signed copy, uh, signed live and in person in Philadelphia. And I remember those videos and really putting yourself out there. But you just said something a moment ago where you talked about the element of service. And I want to touch on that. Not that I don't know what service is, but <laughs> but more, what was it that you saw that you're like, you know what? I, I I want to, you know, like I said, focus. That's the word I want. Focus more on the aspect of service. Well, it's it's more about priorities, you know, what's important mm -hmm. in culture, I think, is a consequence of service. Okay. Ah, okay. So if we're gonna have a strong culture as a company. How are we serving our customers? And mm -hmm. are they, to us, they're our client partners. Mm -hmm. Those that we've worked with for years and have been able to participate in uh, observing and being a mm -hmm. part of and benefiting from the success of their organizations. So I think, you know, service is going to be different for anyone listening to this, what products that their companies mm -hmm. offer, what services their companies offer. But in the spirit of, you know, culture mattering and helping companies with their company culture, that takes time. It takes effort. It takes energy. It takes intensity, intellectual property, human capital, right? Yes. Time, spending mm -hmm. time. So, um, yeah, there's. I think there's an inherent tension between marketing and sales and service because think about it if you have no clients mm -hmm. you have all the time in the world mm -hmm. to tell everybody they, why they should hire you yes. then you get some mm -hmm. now there's only so much time that ever existed mm -hmm. now you have to serve the customer and continually telling people that you exist to get new customers and there's an inherent tension in that that tension is uh, navigating that tension is part of any small business is learning how to attract talent, how to develop processes and systems to burden that tension and to continually grow their business. So you're seeing more of me because that's the next degree of responsibility, I think, that I have to the brand, to our current customers as they're served to continue innovating and growing and the new companies that you know may or may not uh, know or want to learn about culture and get better at that word and become better business people that, you know, if I'm not out there talking and saying culture matters, mm -hmm. who is? And then of course that goes back to my original, you know, maybe there are people listening to this that feel like they have something to say and they're not saying it. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, why not go out there and say it? I want to say, it. especially if you have contempt for those you could deem as competition. Oh, so let me ask you, you just like you just partially answered the question, but I, I wanted a more complete response, which is this. The question is in the aspect of service without giving away client secrets or compromising proprietary stuff. What in addition to putting yourself out there more, what are some aspects of service that you've been noticing that are really impactful that companies could take on? Obviously, we're talking generalities. But what I mean is, what are some things in the service aspect when time gets compressed? What are some must-dos in regards to service that when you have a limited amount of time, what are some things you should you know, bring to the front? Tell the truth. Mm. Communicate quickly. Mm -hmm. Don't put it off. Um, <laughs> how about starting with that? That's quite clear and concise uh, in, in that regard, too. I love that. Um, no, don't yes people. Be aware when one has. I mean, if, you, if, if we sell something to someone, right. they've invested in what? The potential outcome, the value of what their investment could garner them. Like what's the mm -hmm. outcome to them? I think a great uh, relationship between a uh, company and a, and a customer mm -hmm. is that, that product fulfillment, that service fulfillment, that expectation met or exceeded. And it's very easy to get, it's almost intoxicating to get absorbed or, or um, you know, 
excited around the marketing of, the selling of, and lose sight of the service of. We often see this in companies as they grow, the gap, the gulf between sales and operations grows and the resentment with it, the tension with it, the, de the deceit with it, mm -hmm. the omission with it, the infighting with it, mm -hmm. the confusion with it. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, we don't even trust the customer reviews because we're not listening to our own people. So we're not even practicing, you know, that it's like the chicken or the egg. Who do we need to be listening to? The customer, the people. Well, what about if it's both? Yeah. It's how? So mm -hmm. service uh, naturally breaks down with growth and it's mm -hmm. up to management to help that tension mm -hmm. become less. Mm -hmm. That's where leadership comes in. And that ultimately becomes a culture conversation, which is a conversation uh, between the various uh, helpers, you know, the mm -hmm. consultants, advisors, uh, you know, qualified professionals that work with organizations to help the organization mm -hmm. achieve their visions, ex execute on their strategies, and ultimately provide better products and services for the marketplace. See, we do all that. Well, and that's massive because I feel like it is just speaking for myself personally, that, that it's a question of you're often bracing for an anticipated poor result like like to me i think i'll just speak for me spending a lot of time worrying about bad outcomes whether or not that's even real and so often in any sorts of communications you're hearing things and you were taking them in directions that no one was intending them to go, but based on your own practical experience, your own paranoia, your own sense of whatever, that you are in essence like, yeah, 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 but I'm going to bet that this is going to implode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you tell me not to be a yes person, but but in meanwhile, you know, like, look what happened or those sorts of things. Um you say, so why not put my hat in the ring? I, I want to add one thing. Please. Like marketing, think awareness. Sales, think customer decision. Mm -hmm. Service, think execution. Mm -hmm. Culture, listening, telling the truth, responsibility. It's like if you're going to think of these components of business, we have no customers. Someone's listening to this. You know, I want to start a business. Well, what are you intending to do? Why? Mm -hmm. How do you think you can deliver on it? And what's your message to the world? Mm -hmm. I was running, you know, culture matters, speaking, talking about it, podcasting, talking about mm -hmm. it, yep. doing videos, talking about it. That mm -hmm. connected us many years ago. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and so the marketing, the awareness leads to an opportunity to have that one on one conversation with someone. Ideally, you know, listen, mm -hmm. qualify. Mm -hmm. Asking questions, understanding the problems of the potential customer, mm -hmm. asking for the business. That's like we're going from marketing to sales. Mm -hmm. Over time, of but then we have lead to service. Mm -hmm. Serving is executing on that customer's perception of value. They think, oh, this is going to be worth more than I'm investing. So the service is executing, it's delivering on. Mm -hmm promise the potential the perception the sale mm -hmm. in time that leads to reputation that could otherwise be called brand but what if the rep what if the brand is really the, the brand is high and the reputation is low well because brands can be fabricated mm -hmm. we can we can delete all those comments or we can sh no. shuffle all of those reviews under the Absolutely. table and just so anyway, just as a quick heuristic for people like marketing, awareness, sales, customer decision, service, executing, culture, listening, telling the truth, mm -hmm. uh, responsibility, um, you know, brand, perception of reality. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And so, and by the way, it's like you read my mind. I was going to ask you to repeat those 
cause effect, cause effect, cause effect. And you just did. So thank you. You just saved me a question because I wanted to, like I said, I was listening and I didn't want to just gloss over it. So that's perfect. Um, the brand part is fascinating to me right now because of the sense of perception. All of this in a literal world is all perception. But brand to me, I think, has the most subjectivity because you create it, you can edit it, you can delete it, uh, you can tell a great story, and no one is there to either fact check you or you know or, or whatever. It just sounds great, so you go. Um, it's one of the things that I wanted to head toward today. <laughs> Don't need to head at, but head toward is. I've had the privilege of guesting on your podcast a number of times, and it's a radically different experience for me than leading a podcast. It's it, it, it's just a radically different. It, it, it's it's vulnerable to me. Uh, dropping my guard doesn't come all that easily, and so to me, when I'm guesting you with you, and thank you for that, or anywhere. Um, it, it, it is kind of an exercise, A, in relaxation and making certain, you know what I mean? My shoulders are dropped and I'm I'm speaking clearly and all that stuff and being prepared for you. You've been on several podcasts relatively recently, including my own. What was it like for you the first couple of times? You're like, you know what? I'm throwing my hat in the ring. Why not? Do you remember the feeling of the first couple? Generally frustrated. Why? I I I don't enjoy them mm -hmm. yet because mm -hmm. I don't want to be talking to myself. Um, I I want to engage the host better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I I I don't know if people are following me. That's something I always struggle with. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, am I being understood? Am I making myself clear? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, there, but there's a there's a what's made it easier for me to go on the podcast. Yeah, again, is I've curated a safe place. I have dozens and dozens of hosts like yourself mm -hmm. who like me. Mm -hmm. For me, that that you know right. me off of this, whatever it, whatever drama we're playing out right now. Right. That's. Although it's just us talking, mm -hmm. we're not, it's not just us. It's mm -hmm. us and who we could be perceived to be. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're having a conversation with anyone that will ever listen to this, that we either know or don't know, or may never meet. It changes that dynamic of a conversation. So it's not just us having a conversation. We're having oh, no. a conversation through this subconscious projection mm -hmm. of who we think we could be perceived to as by culture and there's a fakeness in it there's a vanity in it there's a hollowness in it it's a irony yeah because it's it's a it be, irony it's like it's a very relational relation that's mm -hmm. anti-relational because it's I, not just right, us yeah, having yeah. conversation yeah. we're having conversation with the world right mm -hmm. now okay okay that's a one of the it's, fakeness it's, and hollowness it's being part of recorded it. It's being recorded. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking mm -hmm. to others through this caricature of me, even if I'm not mm -hmm. creating it on purpose. I it's see, fake to me. It's yeah, fake. well, I can see one aspect of the fakeness could be like this, which is... So now what can equalize that? Me being less full of shit. <laughs> so there is a... It's an interesting call to responsibility yeah. in that inherent accountability of mm -hmm. the crowd here in sight. Mm -hmm. Well, I could just get up and posture. Yeah. Or I could say, yeah, John, I don't really like going on the podcast. I'm doing it because mm -hmm. I have a responsibility to the company, right? To, to, to be a voice of, of, of my reason to grow right. the company to, to, cause that's part of what the founder, the CEO's job is, is PR. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we are. This is who we yes. are. This is why we do it. This is how we do it. Hire us. Damn it. Right. <laughs> so, but I think the whole thing just pisses me off quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I like to listen to people instead. It's safer. Mm -hmm. I'm very good at it. I get told I'm great at it every day. So there's positive affirmation. 
I'm not in arguments or being yelled at. Mm -hmm. So it's it's much easier to be the host for me. Oh my God. So folks, like I said, that that is so speaking to me. What is that the most people that do these podcasts as, as guests, they need therapists, not get on a damn podcast. Uh, right. Well, <laughs> I want to be clear. I could use a, th a couple therapists. Oh, I have one. Folks, I have one. I've stolen from my therapist some of my communications hacks, and I credit them all the time. But um, I like to explore ideas. I don't yeah. like to. I'm not a rigid person. Mm -hmm. I believe it's what makes it's who I am. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 it's. If I was more rigid and I got on here with here's the three steps to culture, mm -hmm. that would convert at a higher level. Right. I don't give a shit about that though. So I better do a lot of this mm -hmm. if anybody's going to raise their hand and say, ah, oh, I want to get closer to Jay, mm -hmm. maybe return to retain his company. So mm -hmm. like there's that aspect to answer, but to go, I never finished answering. There's a, there's a, there's a, a cadre of hosts mm -hmm. like yourself, family, you. good uh, relationships yep. that I'm going on their shows. I like them. I like mm -hmm. you. I like them. Mm -hmm. And I have enough of an actual culture, people in my life that have shows that I'll go on. And I'm set testing and seeing how I like it, if it's something I'm gonna. But mm -hmm. and 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 so I figure if I do a lot of that, I'll be able to reveal a little bit more of who I am, mm -hmm. other than just the interviewer Jay or the the advisor Jay. Because when I'm doing the interviews, I'm ultimately acting as a, a component of advisory, which is inquiry and listening and diagnosis and things. You're a facilitator in those cases. So I mean, you you do your homework. Your people have breakthroughs on the show. They get yeah. Sure. Complimentary advisory service. I have. Um, and, and it, absolutely. You're not alone. It's just what I'm mm -hmm. giving it away. And it, ultimately, I'm, it's helping me develop. And then it's building the brand mm -hmm. and the customers, the customers. Yeah, the fans, the listeners love it. Well, that's one of the highest levels of service you've given to me. I mean, in terms of outward facing, Thanks. I don't know the inward. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, to me, that's one of the most outward facing out elements of service that you provide Episode after episode after episode after episode, right? Um, when I said that spoke to me, I am personally typically a thin skin, don't like to be confronted, uh, always afraid if it my weaknesses, always afraid of being wrong based upon what that would represent in some overwhelmingly big dumb picture. One of my own personal projects with myself, and this is now oh, a couple decades in, and it it's still a daily job for me, is to expose myself in every which way. You know what I mean? In a sense that, well, maybe not every which, but I'm going to say, but in, in, in a I lot need of ways. Only fans for that. <laughs> I need so I need a bump to get That's that to plug. work. But um, but it's it's. It, it's but Click the link below. No, yeah, exactly. And, and and for God's sake, with somebody. Um, but it's to me, it's the only thing that makes me stronger. I so the hosting, you know, putting opinions out there, not necessarily confronting, but challenging people. I'm not that great at it. I'm better than I used to be. I don't throw like blind hissy fits at, at, like I would did in the beginning. Um and It'd so, probably be good for the audience, like clarification wise. Yeah, we're whole, we're we we're more a partner to car companies, right? So we're more a partner to companies. Thank you. Okay. So someone that has five hundred employees that's listening to this, hundred, you know, two hundred fifty, they then they desire culture. Yeah, they want to understand that term better. Mm -hmm. They've got some they're looking to bring to market at a higher level. Mm -hmm. They are open to advisory, consultants, mm -hmm. strategists, mm -hmm. because that's where we've cut our teeth to be very successful. Uh, it's a lot of IP and manpower resources, right? So you asked right. about like where I've been the last. Mm -hmm. Well, if all those resources, because this is the values, like mm -hmm. the client comes first. If those resources are going to the client, they're growing. We're we're get we're growing through them. Mm -hmm. If we said, ah, it's like the Wolf of Wall Street or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> then it'll be all those resources would just go. And this is one of the ironies of, of, of business marketing. All the resources would go to me. Now mm -hmm. I'm so, you know, fuck the client. Now I'm mm -hmm. just everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. 
customer service is down, meaning yep. it's all a bunch of fagazi. Mm-hmm. But everyone's calling me every day and saying, oh, you got to help me with your culture because I'm everywhere. Mm-hmm. This is one of the, the the dynamics of business that always have to be the, the pendulum can't swing mm-hmm. too far one way or the other. Right. So for the last handful of years, we've been so focused on our resources to our customers. My personal uh, uh, caricature, but, you know, but the puppeteering of me oh, online. I was going to say down. Oz. You know, the great, powerful eyes behind the curtain. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, but, but what I'm saying, you know, I'm less out there because mm-hmm. our resources are focused on what matters most to us, our customers. Right. So, so, so for example, it would appear as though, you know, where'd Jay go? Mm-hmm. No, I've been here the whole time. Just where's our focus? What really matters to us? Mm-hmm. It's less important to me to be famous than it is to get results. Got it. Yeah. That doesn't mean you choose one or the other, though. Mm-hmm. So where I'm I'm at my journey is like, all right, I've got a lot more to say. Mm-hmm. I've read a lot more. I've written a lot more. We've gotten result more results. Yeah. And it's time to get out there. Mm-hmm. And how can we improve this pendulum swinging mm-hmm. where it's not either or, right? Because you find people that you can't find them anywhere and they're the top in their field. Mm-hmm. Never even heard of them. Yep. And then there's people that all you do is see them everywhere and mm-hmm. you read their customer service reviews and they're essentially selling bull, bull crap. Yeah. Or there's none or there's zero reviews. You know what I mean? Or there's just nothing. You know what I mean? Well, it's just air. Yeah. Yeah. That, that... Anyway. So how's that going for you? This aspect of your current journey. Oh, I'm quitting today. <laughs> And I applaud you for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, right? Overwhelming public demand. Oh, yeah, demand. I'm quitting. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, my yeah. God, right? Didn't I read that um, entrepreneur on the one of the episodes, like, about how, you know, it was like, it's like eating glass or something like that? Didn't didn't we didn't we do that 30 Days of Thought? We actually did that specifically. Yeah, the cow and the, the eating. And the, yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. every day I'm an entrepreneur, I quit or something like that. I quit. And that was that. How's, how's it going? Called. I quit. How is it going? Sunday, hold on. Sunday. I'm fishing, I'm fishing, I'm fishing. Dang it, John. Um, hold on. Wait. Oh, you look for the book. I'm sorry. Uh, folks, here's your handy dandy reference. You go to, and mine is signed, by the way. Thanks, <laughs> brother. Um, right? Ah, quit. Page 47. And so why wait? Why make people wait or do their own homework is where I'm going. So I'll literally, ah, I quit. Every day, I'm the entrepreneur. I'm thinking of an assembly line, white backdrop with black spots stick out in mind and the fear of the unknown, but not quite a sense of what is. These creatures slowly creeping to their maker is what of the entrepreneurial climb. It's 10 a.m. and the alarm has gone off seven times. 4.55, click off. 5.25, click off. 545, 605, 645, 830, 9 a.m. Click, click, click off. The decision has been made and I'm mad now, but I'm an, I am no cow. I am I am an entrepreneur and I'm an angry one at that. And it continues to go. All right. So I, I want to answer your question. This Yo. I, by the way, I love thank you for the shout out for the book. I absolutely the book was unbelievably successful, and then I happened. Mm. Tell me what you mean, and then I happened. I happened. Listen, hindsight is. Kierkegaard said Mm -hmm. life can only be understood backwards. But must be lived forwards. Mm -hmm. So I want the audience to understand. Mm -hmm. I believe I've made many mistakes. Mm -hmm. I believe I could easily convince myself that the natch, all the stuff I all that. Mental masturbation. Right. In the beginning of this podcast about marketing and sales. <laughs> oh, you. All right, fine. <laughs> John. All right, fine. The they world podcast for that. <laughs> so all that, uh-huh. okay, I could easily be deceiving myself. Right. That, okay, it was just, you know, in the best interest of the customer mm-hmm. for me to not do a big component of my job. I'm going to explain what's my job. Mm -hmm. Anyone that starts a business, anyone that's listening Mm -hmm. to this, that is is the um, founder of a business, 
or the CEO, mm -hmm. part of the job is to market. It's to tell people why this culture matters, this company matters. Mm -hmm. It's to the reasons. I, we have a, a process that companies invest in called the CEO manual. Mm -hmm. And they're the three R's of the CEO. The reasons, the relationships, and the resources that the CEO has access to that others don't, that dictates the future of a business, the reasons, the relationships, and the resources, the three R's of the CEO manual. Mm -hmm. I could have done and will do a better job continuing, continuing to market mm -hmm. culture matters. Mm -hmm. When I say this book was a huge success, it changed lives. I mean, it's unbelievable. We've been working with people that, that went through the book for years. We, we have, it has changed lives. I failed the book because I did not market it as at, at the level that I believe I have in my in my body to yeah, market capabilities. Right. I believe that because you've asked me why I'm out there more. It's yeah, if it's not it now, mm -hmm. it's it's if it's not now, it's never. Then there's something mm -hmm. deeper than than I've. I've quit on, on, and that makes no sense because we're so unbelievably more successful than we were mm -hmm. when I started the damn company. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not telling people that culture matters now, what the hell am I doing? I'm likely just resting on my laurels, being fat and happy and, mm -hmm. you know, buying stocks in my underwear with milk nice. stains on my sweatshirt. Nice. Okay. nice. So I want to, I want to be honest on this right. show and aware that you know you i believe in service mm -hmm. i believe culture comes as a consequence of service mm -hmm. i believe selling creates a call to values and you have to service the clients right. you know, in our industry mm -hmm. we're in the wholesale we work deeply with companies less b2c at this point up to this point rather right because yeah. we didn't have products well, you're like, more b2b now right i mean so well, we've always been b2b and now right. we're more, we can we, we're in both because i've Slowly over time, we've created mm -hmm. products like the CEO manual right. that generally anyone can invest in that's listening to this. That's the part of the damn job. If you're going to mm -hmm. start a company, you continually mm -hmm. have to innovate and create more products and services. That said, you asked, you know, how are things Here's going? Here's the direct question. How is it going so far? Here's my answer. The outward facing. Page 53. Just an example. I'm <laughs> giving don't read me a page. Give me the answer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. That's like the perfect. That's what everybody wants, right? I'm not their cup of tea, then. I'm like the whole. Well, that this is funny. How would you know <laughs> if you're just gonna sit and read some guy's book? Oh, that's right, it's yours. Uh, <laughs> I, I said I'm not, and I'm doing that tea, very but... intentionally. And you know that, but Here's as I answer. said, is uh, yeah, but, yeah, I just know, tell right? me. That's an inside joke. That's funny. It is so. a very inside joke, folks. And and as I said, I don't like doing full episodes on inside yeah. jokes, but I had to get at least one. If, in. if you're listening to this podcast, I'd like you to go to um, episode 78 of Dropping Bombs podcast. It's one I'm of the stealing a line from that episode. And shameless plug. Um, <laughs> it's one of the best. One of the best podcasts out there for business and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Listen to episode 78, mm -hmm. I'm on there. Listen to episode 120, mm -hmm. I'm on there. And mm -hmm. listen to episode 703, mm -hmm. and you'll, you, you're will you going to get another taste of me. So here's my answer to your question. It's uh, page 53. Okay. Seven days a week. Right. Picture a vat of butter. Ooh. Do you remember this one or no? Uh, I'm going to ask you to read it out loud. It's composite. If this far in, you might as well just read the damn page. Fuck, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> How long we got? Two try to hours? Put the, try to put the spotlight on me. Read the damn, answer the damn question or read the page. Or do you remember what it says? Yo. <laughs> we have two hours, right? Oh, seven. Yeah. Um, don't worry. Right, so oh, folks, wait. Come back. Come back. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Picture of Adam Butter. Mm -hmm. Its composite is creamy and textured. Mm. Smooth and thick. It represents our lives full of richness, experiences, and memories of pleasure mm -hmm. that bring us back to better times. 
but wisdom hindering our souls for the coming future, the future we create. As the butter continues to churn, time continues to pass by. Mm -hmm. Days go by without a muse. When our head stays down, focused on our given task, our purpose has been handed down and bestowed upon us by destiny. A purpose forged from a greater vision and of a better life. As the days go by, we forget who we knew. We distract ourselves from the fear of thought while the pain inside stays numb for just a little while longer. The vat of butter, our life is swirled into its grandest potential or its deepest oblivion. The question is motion. How are we stirring our vat? How are we stirring up our lives and those we touch through, our, through the journey? These seven days will pass regardless, but how will we use them? In all this time, we may not ask these vital questions when all we must spend is seven days. The answers to these questions are monumental. At death's inevitable door, most will meet the same foe, regret. We will ask ourselves why, what, and how come we didn't try? If only we knew the importance of these seven days. We can imagine our vat. Our vat is our resource of potential, and it is stirred in congruence with our actions. Unfortunately, due to ignorance, its taste may be foul, but all we can say in our last possible breath will be, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> what the, was I on drugs writing this shit? I, I can't even comment on that. However, here's what I can comment That's my on. answer. That, uh, great. By the way, it gives me a whole level of respect for the host of dropping bombs, by the way. Second inside reference. Cheers. But as I cheers is right, how about answering the question uh, directly? Um, <laughs> as opposed to reading oh. something from Mrs. Butterworth or whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Everything with me is a, um, it's like a, an encryption. Right. A deep inside code. By the way, you're reminding me too. One of the things that I know. <laughs> <laughs> is geez, is that the problem often in terms of I'll speak for me, but but what I've observed is that it, it's a case where people in this day and age, myself included, are not giving the generosity of time in regards to watching, listening, thinking, comprehending. And that also includes YouTube, where before the YouTube medium, in regards to conveying messages, folks, if you're in business and you were given the impression, I was, uh, that, oh, people come to YouTube so they have no problem with you airing out or giving a lengthy answer or reading passages or whatever the case may be because they've come to you so they're sitting there with an abundance of time waiting for you to get to it so from a communication side what i've come to learn and what i now do is you answered a question earlier two to two different times brilliantly and fast so to me I'm going to ask the same question. Going back to those other two where you were literally able to use like the R's. Here's are three R's. Boom, boom, boom. Here is the, you know, sales is this, that, that. Help me here. What are you finding for yourself are some strengths and pitfalls as it regards to the way that you are communicating on podcasts, uh, you specifically? I think to be profound, you need to explore. Okay. And few are few can, mm -hmm. few can explore, mm -hmm. and therefore they're they're not profound. They're commodities. I don't know what that means. Well, then I would challenge you to look up the words. We watch the tape. We watch the <laughs> tape. No, I mean this with the most respect. Yeah, for you and everybody, mm -hmm. because there's this, there's this, there's this entitled laziness mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm a part of our culture, mm -hmm. like just, it's all at our fingertips mm -hmm. and, and fine. If someone doesn't have 
an intrinsic reason to listen to this conversation, mm -hmm. I'm okay with them not listening because I'm doing this for me. Mm -hmm. I'm living my life to explore my potential. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, gonna, yeah, so I would say that I, I, my view is that to be profound, you need to explore. Mm -hmm. I believe in people. I believe people can mm -hmm. be, be um, more educated, mm -hmm. more aware, more valuable. Mm -hmm. I believe in learning. I believe in mm -hmm. learning new concepts and mm -hmm. words and mm -hmm. stretching and and mm -hmm. and all of it um ex exploration i like to explore mm -hmm. and so those that desire to explore yeah are are likely they'll be in a season of their life or destined to mm -hmm. connect with someone like me i'm not going to acclimate I'm not going to alter that. It's it's in me. It's like mm -hmm. it's something that I have not even um I'm reacting to. It's my destiny. It's who I am. And my belief from observing is that there are few originals. There are few originals. Right. And I desire to be myself. Mm -hmm. And if that is considered original, I'll take mm -hmm. it. And if it is considered unoriginal, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to know why. But I, what I will not do is, you know, regress or I like, I'm not a, uh, I'm definitely not a, um, you know, I, I'm not selling, there's nothing to sell. Right. Like I'm not doing this podcast mm -hmm. to sell. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this pod, although there are things that can be bought, purchased. I'm doing this, I'm doing podcasts like this to share parts of myself with the world that I've been keeping to myself mm -hmm. and those closest to me, you know, that have physical proximity with yep. me, and I want to explore. So yeah, every time I have a, I have a podcast, I'm mm -hmm. going to explore. There, I, like people that though. follow me and mm -hmm. listen to me on these podcasts, yours included, okay. they are not going to get mm -hmm. the same conversation on any of these episodes mm -hmm. i wouldn't want it no but they 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 won't mm -hmm. but, you know it could be components yeah right there's themes of i'm exploring yep like how to not be a piece of garbage mm -hmm. i think look this whole show centers on authenticity so for god's sake that's what i would like i said applaud i think it's important that you bring it to light though and by the way i also think the way that you answered that question answered my question which was the it, it sometimes it's simply a matter of i didn't understand you rather than here's what what i notice not with me at least you're honest enough to say it well i get I on with these that's that's part people. of my process that's for me that's simply for me you know i go on these shows with the mm -hmm. with people that have status right and are too cowardly to say hey i don't know what you're saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a so how about that? Throw the status a mistake. In, and that's an arrogance thing. And I think the way that you know, when folks, if you're watching or listening podcasts, the way that you know that is when, like from the role of the host, either or the guest, they literally don't answer the question even remotely, or they just jump to some rando topic. Okay, now, oh, all right, great, Jay, thanks. Now, tell me about your latest movie, uh, blah, blah, blah. It, it, it's just lazy. Well, but I'll do that all the time. I'll answer a question. Mm -hmm. I'll answer the question underneath the question, which is uh, which is above right. the question that was asked. Mm -hmm. You brought up a word in the answer, lazy, which I think is absolutely accurate and true. I do. I, I I mean, I'm not give, applauding myself because I want to get to it. That's, there is a lazy. Nerves are lazy. Insecurity, or, to me, are signs of laziness because you take lazy steps when you're in those situations. And so I love the fact that you don't pander or patronize to the one that's too lazy. I'm too keyed up. Just tell me what you want to say. It, it's you won't because that's not you. Well, yeah, I, being a host is a lazy act. 
I think so. I'm a, I, I agree. In, in the absence of preparation, in the mm -hmm. absence of like listening is an is an art. It's right. a trained skill. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work. And I don't think it actually has a, a strong relationship with podcasting culture. I actually think that podcasting culture inherently is about the host mm -hmm. getting power from the guest mm -hmm. through the guest's following. That's what I believe. I, I do the podcast so I can work on listening. Yep. Uh, that's why, that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. And to build a, a, build a network of, pe of people I want to do business with, spend time mm -hmm. with. That's how I'm selfishly using the podcast. I think if I was using it to just, you know, hey, how many people of influence can I have on the show? Right. So that their followings follow me. Mm -hmm. I don't actually want to hear what they have to say. And I, I'm not interested in learning mm -hmm. from them. And I'm not going to prepare. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take notes. I'm not going to ask questions uh, based on what's unsaid. Mm. I have my prepared questions. That's as about as much energy as I want to put into it. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to be as, as it's just not going to have the quality of some other individual that does oh. do all of those things. I love that. And I think that's what's made our show very successful. I think, and I think you're right. And I mimic it in certain aspects because I can remember not all that long ago that I was someone, a mentor, a business mentor. He's great, by the way. He is absolutely great. Was talking to me about the way that I should format my own show. Uh, hey, this is how it should go. It's five arcs. It's boom, 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 boom. And you should always be getting to here in this amount of time. And it should end at X time. And I didn't, do, no, that's a lie. I did a couple because I still have that people pleaser. In me. So I'm like, oh, okay, great. I'll do it. I hated it. And I hated it not because I need to be in control, but it was the opposite. The experiment, as you're saying, for me on the other end is this. The more I'm able to let go, you know, and respect the guest, as you were talking about, the lack of preparation to me is a lack, uh, is a lack of respect for who you're bringing. So I'm always prepared. You talked about the preparation. I always prepare. What I won't do, and you and I talk about, it, is have a series of scripted questions. I just won't. And if the episode falls flat because I've either become dis or you know disengaged or I get confused or get lost, you just said something a minute ago that I had the bravery to ask you. I don't get it. It's really important. Important, I believe in communications for anybody, not just for me, for anybody. Just stop the process for a second. Don't get so overwhelmed mm -hmm. that somebody literally is taking over. And then I get afraid to the point where I am almost feeling bullied and I'm too afraid to ask a question at this point. So that's to me what I never want to be able to do. I'd rather risk looking dumb. I'd rather risk being forgetful, you know, or whatever. So what I'm what I'm saying is, as you've clearly just said, th th this part where you know, no, this is you literally said the words. This is who I am, um, you know. In in terms of that, how has that been received in your eyes? I have no idea. Okay. Okay. I I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't. I haven't. I I don't know. That's okay. What do you think? So for myself, uh, I would say this: that uh, that I think because there is a sense of anticipation in regards to what people, me, anybody are expecting from a social media post. This is this is the bad news, not the good news. That the, the, the preconceived what I would like to get from something, you know, uh, you brought up the laziness or entitlement was another word you used. The entitled sense that you got to give me something and that it's that sometimes it can come off as frustrating where the answers don't feel clear enough, fast enough, straight enough. And so 
if you're asking exactly what do I think, I noticed that in a couple of instances, but as we continue to, you and me, uh, build our relationship, build our own communications in this specific podcast conversation that I realized that's good news. I think it's fucking important, really important that you're not co- anybody coming into a, a conversation, especially one that you're not in. Um, <laughs> you're just flying in as a, you know, a fly on the wall and, and having your own expectations. You know what I mean? I think you miss out on a lot. And so directly, what do I think? I think it's, it's, this is why you have conversations. This is why when somebody says, I have no idea that I don't get, I don't need to demand a a response back from you. I just simply want to know. So, you know, what do I think? It helps me to know because not only do I go back and rewatch your podcast guest episodes in a different light, but the good part with this is I watch everybody's in a different light because it, it, it it's what if you're coming from a position of curiosity one of the biggies for me right um in terms of come from curiosity not come from judgment or preconceived notions social media posts podcast episodes you know youtube videos whatever if i'm coming from curiosity i'm always in a better place i always learn more i get better takeaways i just feel better you know that answer your question? No, um, sure. I, I, I don't think that. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, it depends how on how how we will come to. We we our intentions might be to come to something in curiosity. Mm-hmm. As mm-hmm. soon as what's causes friction of what ever beliefs philosophies, thought patterns, um, make up who we are. Mm-hmm. Curiosity goes out the window and now it's fight or flight. Mm-hmm. That's where the onus falls on the other party to be able to um, not fall victim to fight or flight with their counterpart. Mm-hmm. So like, let's, you know, I, as soon as we come into uh, a person that represents an idea that challenges everything that we believe and have to believe to to not suffer to not suffer you know um incomprehensibly mm-hmm. curiosity goes right out the door yeah now it's an argument yep now it's it's posturing now it's a characterization and that's where the the whoever you know that's where whoever that individual their Mm -hmm. counterpart now has to now is burdened with that yes and we'll have to either help pull Mm -hmm. them out of that Mm -hmm. or or not so i think it's great to come into curiosity yeah the the question is um what type (laughs) uh our, you know, where, what's our limit? What's our breaking point? I think that's big. And I'm going to ask you personally, uh, when you get into the, or maybe you never get there. I have, when you get into that fight or flight mentality, like you said, curiosity goes out the window. This has happened to me a lot. What do you do to break that pattern for yourself? To not go into a defensive or or whatever mechanism. Do you have any particular techniques, hacks, whatever, to stay in a conversation and not let it go adversarial for you? Uh, well, I think the work is done before the conversation. Hmm. I think it's done with the people that we haven't talked to in eight years because we still tell people that when we meet that they're an asshole. Okay. I think it, it, I think someone's ability to reason and respond to interpersonal conflict has a relationship with their relationships. Wait a minute. I got it. I, I heard you said it perfectly. Repeat that for me one more time, please. Someone's ability to respond 
mm-hmm. to interpersonal conflict. Right. Like you and me are in are in a debate and it's yeah, digressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To answer your question, you said what what can I do mm-hmm. in the moment to not mm-hmm. go there? Yes. I'm saying it's already too late. Oh. It's how many enemies do you have? What's your relationship with them? Like, mm-hmm. you know, what's the family dynamic? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How often you use drugs? Okay. Are you drinking? Mm-hmm. How often? Mm-hmm. How's your, um, how's your life? Right. Are, do you have a goal? Mm-hmm. Are you working towards it? Are you paying your bills? Can you even afford to? Mm-hmm. Do you have friends? How often do you see them? Mm-hmm. Are you married? Mm-hmm. Do you have a partner? Kids? Adopted or otherwise? Right. The per the whole person. Are you mem- You know. Are you? Do, 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 are you participating in? You know. Do you believe in God? Like. Do you per- participate in that in ritual right. and give it like, so the, my answer to your question is yeah. all the work is done before that, mm. because the person that's disjointed from culture, mm-hmm. they have to win that argument. It's all they have. It's all they have. And so the one of the beautiful things we could do for someone in that moment of right. hell is love them. Mm-hmm. And if we can't love them, well, who's loving us? How are we loving? That brings us back to so I could say, oh yeah, something I do is I'll take notes because maybe I need to listen better. Right. That could be a practical, like, oh, uh, you know. Am I, am I, am I leaning in? Am I trying to understand the other mm-hmm. person, catch myself? Yeah. That's practical, right? Like, okay, that's something that one could do in a discussion with someone mm-hmm. where they could lose, they could succumb to that power dynamic. Yeah. But John, no, I think the work is done before it. Mm-hmm. I think the work is done before. I think we bring love into, mm-hmm. into, into conflict mm-hmm. at, at varying on a spectrum like if i am in the midst of a rivalry with my siblings yeah and i haven't talked to them in 13 years Mm -hmm. how am i gonna have a conversation with a cold call that's telling me to go fuck myself right i'm gonna talk to them the way my brother just talked to me when i talked to him last Mm -hmm. 13 years ago yeah why would I, why would I, li- I mean, if someone listens, God. You know, Jay, that's a little deep. I mean, hello. But actually, no, we're, it's not. No, it's deep. not. We're humans. That's, that really me, it's common it's sense. The, mm-hmm. That's it. It's all the way. So when you just said, but what would I love the most of everything you just said? All of it. But especially all we can do is love them in terms of you being the counterpart. I think that's great. Because even if it sounds like Pollyanna or whatever, it's perfect. You're right. And when you said that, I could feel it from me. It doesn't mean, oh, that's correct then or wrong or whatever. I'm just saying from my own observations, that's always what is going on when I go into fight or flight is some defensive moment from a past tense situation. And I mean, always uh, where, you know what I mean? It was this person or that situation or whatever. And so knowing that it's a great thing that you just said. It's, I want to make sure I make this clear. Yeah, do that it. has limits because absolutely. Oh, sure. It has limits. Of course. So, this is where, let's say I'm at my, I, I, I failed. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, if they're, if you have a relationship with someone, like you, you known them a long time, you, right. you built goodwill. Mm-hmm. They might be able to forgive you. Mm-hmm. And you could always apologize. Mm-hmm. 
you you can always go back. Mm-hmm. You could lose the fight and win the war. Yeah, because the history. And well, and that can be done with anyone, even someone you don't know. Mm-hmm. That could be done with a stranger too. Mm-hmm. It's just someone would have to choose to do that, right? To save face with someone that owes them nothing, that represents mm-hmm. to them everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of the find cool it easy to go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you, man. Um, it's one of the easiest. Po- I, I think it's one of the best reasons why when you choose to be out there, throw your hat in the ring, as you've said earlier, that I think it's why it's so important, because I think it's really important overall. If you're going to be followed, and I don't mean popularity, I mean, literally, if you're choosing a profession or whatever, where you would like someone to follow you, I think the more the better in regards to who you are. This is who I am, as you said. This is the way, and I'm not going to just pander, and you didn't use that word, but I was going to say just to make everyone happy. I think it's really important. That's what I seek in terms of people that help me. That's who I seek with those that I'm attracted to. And so, as you said, in terms of the sense that work is even involved because that has limits as you said because that sense of past history has limits it's about the work you know and i think that part's really really powerful brother um i'm not going to be a sellout with my ideas good why would why would i lower myself to the student's level Mm -hmm. i need to rise myself i need to rise myself so the student comes up right Unless I'm selling something and I'm incentivized Mm -hmm. to just take, like, no, I'd rather explore. That's not going to resonate with everyone. Not everyone explores. Mm -hmm. We don't need everyone. You know, everyone, people are different. There Mm -hmm. are explorers and there are, um, what would you call that? Harvesters. Well, like you're exploring, harvester, hunter. Or gatherers, right? I mean, gatherers. I take, I take, I take, I take, I take, I take. You know, and if you're going to be the one that's growing, if you're going to be the one that, you know, then in that sense, that's why you're needed. Bluntly, that's why. Well, like, for example, a speaker. Mm -hmm. The 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 part of the value, but a speaker provides to a culture Mm -hmm. is like a consolidation of information. It's like Mm -hmm. you get that summation of of it took 10 years to get to that talk it's one hour and it's at least this outcome yep clear concise Mm -hmm. actionable i'm not a speaker i'm the person that helps the institution Mm -hmm. uh, articulate uncover the architecture that makes all that happen Mm -hmm. so I, i want the listener to have a taste of my me personality mm-hmm. how my mind works the questions that i ask the statements that i'm sharing the mm-hmm. philosophies uh and that's that's like a, a zigzag it's not here's the story the analogy the and the, and the metaphor to get the CEO manual. Mm-hmm. So I just th- thought that it might be helpful to add. Well, and and I'll gladly take it. And I'll just say, as I am a speaker, one of the things that helps me is I, I'll speak for me. I need the zigzags. I need the people. See, that one hour, or I've done 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, is a polished, finished rendition. Even though I never give a script speech, I never stick to the script, so to speak. I always speak differently. And God, that sounds self-serving. Let me get out of that. And But what I was going to say is this. You can't be there without someone helping you. You pull all of it away. Like, like so, because the editing process doesn't work if you're just going in with these bullet points of I need to say this and I need to close this and I, you know what I mean? So that's, that's the value to you, man, is that it's, you need somebody asking the right questions, as you said, 
asking the right questions, giving the correct feedback, being insightful and not compromising the way that you think or answer questions and being fearless enough that you are, um, no, I'm going to answer it like this. I'm not for everybody. I'm just, uh, this is how I'm answering. And so knowing that those polished one hours to me can happen. They're just not nearly as good as the ones where it's like, okay, you're pulling all the information out. And then I'm literally, my job is to like, okay, I'll use this. I won't use that. I don't think that's that interesting. I'll try that. Is it edited? Yeah. Could you say it's compromised? Maybe. But in the essence of time and respect, the only way you get there is by somebody being kind enough and brave enough and caring enough to ask you the questions that are legit and then being, you know, honest enough to answer them. So to me, it is important you say that. That's, it really matters, you know? Because otherwise, it's just propaganda and sales pitches. And Christ, you know, it's like we've had our fair share. I think that's one of the beauties of podcasting is that it's less rigid. Mm -hmm. And, well, in its nature, it, it's, yeah, it can be it can free, be anything. Right. free thinking, exploratory, mm -hmm. creative, less rigid. Um, it gives It gives more power to the audience because they can go from speech to speech to speech on their iPhone or what have you. They can yeah. click the different shows. Oh, I want this. I want this. I want this. And it's it, it, it unlike if we were all physically together mm -hmm. for an event. Right. And the people in that room are all in that room. There's no other room to go in. It's the only right, one right, room. Right. There's yeah, one yeah. room and mm -hmm. one podcast app. Mm-hmm. And that's the speech or the or the Q and A or whatever's happening on that stage. Now, with that, are social pressures. Ooh, if I go to the bathroom right now, or ooh, if I leave, mm -hmm. you know, this is like everyone's really tuned in. This isn't for me though. All of this gives more choice to consumers to explore mm -hmm. and to weed out ideas and for the best ideas to win. All of that's good. You know, I I think that there are things that I need to say for myself mm. and i have for myself have to share that mm -hmm. with the world mm -hmm. i uh I, I want feedback from the world mm -hmm. on the on the value of these ideas mm -hmm. but like because that'll help the ideas and ultimately help me as a steward of ideas mm -hmm. I'm more interested in exploring the ideas mm -hmm. and 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 uh, and trying to figure out what's right, what's true, what's mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. Than I am anything else. Whether that's you know that's why I don't like if Carl Jung he said ideas don't have people don't have ideas. Ideas have people. So it's 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 easier not to get caught up you know there's value in that idea that people ideas have people people don't have ideas in the sense that we all represent ideas mm -hmm. if i disagree with the idea that you're representing yeah and i'm i'm it's through loving you mm -hmm. in the conflict with the idea mm -hmm. That I may not lose myself, the best in myself, mm -hmm. in the in the virtuous pursuit in the like of of trying to get the best idea. I could be trying to make the world a better place by looking for what's true with the idea, while killing you. Yes. I don't want to. I, I mm -hmm. what if I didn't have to kill my mm -hmm. adversary? And we could explore the idea together because we're all just representing ideas, mm -hmm. ways to inhabit these bodies, explore these cultures, explore the world, live our lives. Mm -hmm. And there's a necessary rigidity around ideas like this is how I live and this is how I want you to live. And this is how right. it's necessary because mm -hmm. we could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Our ideas could kill us and kill everyone around us. It's At the same time, we don't want to lose ourselves, the best of ourselves, mm -hmm. 
killing our enemies in the exploration of the right idea. I'm fascinated about, I'm obsessed with the exploration of even this idea. That, <laughs> so, I, yeah. and, and I, I'm, I want to, if I'm going to go on these shows mm -hmm. and, so, and, and share myself with mm -hmm. audiences, like what does Jay do? What is culture matters? Who is Jay? Mm -hmm. How does culture matters work? The audience is going to have to put up with the exploration of anything <laughs> that I feel compelled to explore. I think it's well worth the exploration. Uh, last question, just for today, which is now this. subscribe to my OnlyFans and subscribe to oh, and mine too. Uh, but the question is this: in terms of that sense of ideas, is there any idea? Because when you just said very passionately, um, there are I do this for myself. I see these things. So I need to say them. Anything today, idea wise or thought wise? that was unsaid that you'd care to express? No. Beautiful. Then our work is done. <laughs> Damn, you need to come back again. And I'm, that's an ask, not a demand. Uh, I need you back, brother. Um, Jay Duran, thanks so much for showing up for me again today. Folks, you've just heard another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is everywhere you listen, and we get you get to watch it too as well. Watch us, listen to us, share, subscribe, love us, subscribe to Jay's OnlyFans, and Jay Duran one more time. Thanks so much for you, for you, my friend. Thank you so much, man. Folks, have a fantastic day. We'll talk soon. Bye. And now, making its way across the finish line, Your Message Received has been a production of Duffin Media.